okay. <laughs> All right, so today we'll, uh, we'll continue uh, talking about data structures. We'll, uh, we'll get into two-dimensional data structures, so those are matrices and data frames. And then we'll start talking about subsetting as well, okay? Um, this lecture is should be posted under week one for week one Wednesday. So if you want to follow along, you can download it and follow along, but I will not force you to. All right, so uh, we'll get started. And uh, all right, so matrices. Ma Wait, is that okay? All right. So we can add a dimensional attribute to an atomic vector and it will suddenly become an matrix or an array. So matrices and arrays are atomic. They meaning, atomic means that everything in the data structure is of the same type. Okay, and if you put something of a different data type, everything will get coerced so that everything has the same data type. Excuse me. So, um, so basically, a matrix is, is just like an atomic vector with dimensional attributes to it. So here, we can create a matrix by using the function matrix, and we give it the vector, 1 through 6, and we're going to say, I want three columns and two rows, or something like that, okay? So if you do... Uh, do that, it's going to create a matrix one through uh, with the elements one through six with three columns and two rows. And the way it fills the populates the matrix is, is that it populates it element um, column wise. So it goes one, two down the first column, then it goes to the second column, three, four, and then lastly the third column, five, six. Now the matrix function is smart enough to figure out if you only define one of these things, if you say I want three columns and you give it six elements, it's going to know, well, if there's three columns and there's a total of six elements, it's got to have two rows. Likewise, if you give it just the argument number of rows is two, it will figure out that there has to be three columns. It will um, error out if you give it, like, uh, if you say matrix one through seven and three columns, okay, then it doesn't, then it doesn't know what to do, right, because it doesn't, three is not a factor of seven, so it's gonna, it's gonna um, error out there, okay? Um, well, yes, okay. And then if you wanna create an array, so an array is basically a matrix, matrix being two dimensional, and if you want more than two dimensions, it's an array. So you can have a three dimensional array, which will be some kind of like prism, rectangular prism of values, and then if you have four dimensions, what is that, hyper cube prism something? I don't know what comes after that. Um, I, I can't picture things in higher than three dimensions, barely, you know, four, whatever, okay. Anyway, and, and so the way it fills out, you know, we're gonna say create an array made up of the elements one through 12, and then we provide the dimensions uh, in vector form here. Basically, this says two rows, three columns, two layers. Okay, and it fills out first uh, down down the rows. So in the first column, one, two, three, four, five, six. It fills out kind of the first layer, and then it goes on to the next layer: seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, and we can see the way the brackets to kind of denote what we're dealing with, we've got one comma to indicate kind of our first row, and then comma one to indicate our first column, and then comma common one to indicate our first layer, and comma comma two to indicate our second layer in this data structure of an array. If we want, we can take a vector, such as one through six, okay, here I'm assigning it to the letter C, and I, I told you you shouldn't assign things to the letter C, but I did. Um, it's okay because I'm not creating a function called C, but, um, but here uh, we're assigning the, the letter uh, values one through six to C, and then so this is gonna be an atomic vector, right? Atomic vector, but then I just say, you know what, let's throw on some dimensions to it, okay? I say dimension C is gonna have what? three rows, two columns, three comma two. And when we do that, suddenly 
we have a matrix of three rows and two columns, and it fills them out column-wise, one, two, three, four, five, six. We can do the same thing. We can just say, oh, you know what? I made a mistake. Actually, I want two rows and three columns, okay? So just saying dimensions of C, I, ha I didn't even, C is still a, right now at this point, C is a three by two matrix, but I can just modify the dimension characteristic or dimension attribute of C, and now I have a matrix with two rows and three columns, two comma three. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And um, yeah, and and here we have. Well, here let me let's go back and let's just. Um, Okay, so here I can look at assign things here, and C is a, a matrix, and then um, and I can I can change this and do dimensions of. No, no. Okay, I can ask what are the dimensions of C, and it's going to say three, two. I can do one comma six. What's this going to do? It's going to have one row and six columns. Okay, this is still a matrix. This is not a vector. Okay, if uh, you know that's not the same thing as one through six, even though that's originally what we started off with. So if I have D is one through six, D is this, and C and D are are distinctly different. C has the dimensions one row, six columns. If I wanted to, I could entirely get rid. Of the dimensions on C, right? So, just a quick check: what are the attributes of D right now? D is just a numeric vector or an integer vector, one through six. Does it have any attributes? No. So, if I ask attributes of D, it's going to return back null. Okay. And if I ask the dimensions of D, what is this going to be? Dimensions of D is null, okay? Because dimensions are really just an attribute, so if, they're, if the attributes are null, it certainly has no dimen uh, dimensional attribute either. Okay, whereas if I ask, so C is currently this, if I ask for the attributes of C, what will I get? I'll get a list with one thing in there, which is the dimension attribute, which will be one and six, okay? <coughs> So the attributes of C is that the dimensions are one row, six columns. And so I can turn C, which is the elements one through six, but I can, if I get rid of the dimensions, if I say dimensions of C, I can null this out, okay? I can kill off the uh, dimensions of C, and what is C now? C is now just an atomic vector. Okay, and if I ask for the attributes of C, it says there are no attributes because we, we nulled those out. And let's just switch between this and this. Okay. okay, so that's where we are. And so, yes, you can modify uh, the dimensional attributes of some vector. And, uh, and change the, uh, the shape of your matrix accordingly, okay? And, uh, okay, so the length of a matrix, okay, is gonna be the number of elements in that matrix. So if A is this matrix, and if I ask what is the length of A, what will it return? Length of A is six, okay? So if I look at A, a is this matrix, two rows, three columns, and if I ask for the length of A, it will say six, okay? But if I want the number of rows or the number of columns, number of rows of A is two, number of columns of A is three, okay? And effectively what this is doing is number of rows and number of columns of A is basically just asking for the dimensions of A and it's returning back um, 
the appropriate value, all right? And if you look at the function, what is the number of columns of A? It's a function of x which just says, give me, ask for the dimensions of x and give me back the second thing in there, okay? I mean, that's the entire function that, uh, that this is doing. So when you ask number of columns of A, all it's, whoops, all it's really doing is just saying, dimensions of A, give me back the second thing, okay? That's, that's a, exactly what this is to, says. So sometimes you're curious what, what are the internal workings of a function. Sometimes they're very simple, okay, and easy to understand. Other times you ask, how does a function work? And it gives you like 300 lines of code, and you say, well, I'm sorry, I asked. Um, we could ask uh, for the row names, okay? What are the row names of A, all right? And, and we can assign names to um, the rows and the columns of a matrix, okay? So here I'm gonna assign the capital letters A and B to the rows, and the cap, uh, lowercase letters A, B, and C to the columns, okay? And so A suddenly has uh, names here, okay? So rather than having the generic references to the rows and the columns, now I have names, okay? But of course, we can still reference the rows and columns much the, uh, the old fashioned way, but we can also reference them using names now, okay? And, uh, and so we see this length of A is six, number of rows of A is two, number of columns of A is that, um, here, let's actually, let's play around with this a tiny bit. So here I have A, which is this thing. I'm going to add some rows, row names and column names. Okay, A now has this. And so if I ask for the attributes of A, what will this return? What are the attributes that are now associated with A? We have dimensions, what else do we have? And names, right? And so we ask the attributes of A, we see we've got dimensions two and three, and then we actually see a second list. There's the dim names, which is actually a list itself, where the first thing in dim names is A and B, and the second thing in dim names is A, B, C. So if I actually ask for the structure, the structure of the attributes of A, we can see it's a list of two things. The first thing is dim and dim names, and dim names itself is a list of two things, the, uh, the row names and the column names. And if we ask for row names, the, the function row names itself, it gets a little bit um, messy, but we can see uh, it's, it's asking for the dimension names um, and, uh, and, and to give you back kind of the first thing in the dimension names, okay? Unless it's a null. <laughs> but, um, but don't worry about that. You don't have to worry about this internal code here. But basically, we can ask, what are the row names of A? And it tells us that it is A and B, okay? So here, we've got that. Um, and, uh, and that's that, okay. The uh, dimensions of A, two and three. Okay, B is our array, 12 elements in the array, and it's got um, two rows, three columns, two layers, okay? So if we ask what is the length of B, it tells me you have a total of 12 elements in it, okay? We don't have a nice convenient way to kind of reference the, um, rows and columns and things and uh, layers or something like that. So you can just ask, what are the dimensions of B? And it will return back a vector. Two rows, three columns, two layers here. Okay. And just like if we asked for the dim names of A, which is a list, okay? The dim, dim names of A is a list of two elements, one for the rows and one for the columns, we can name the dimensions of an array B by providing um, a list with as many elements as dimensions. So B is a three-dimensional array, so I can give it a list of three vectors, each of them containing the names of B, okay? So here I'm giving it the, uh, the first vector is for the rows, the second vector is for the column, and the third vector is for the layers, so we can see row one, row two, columns A, B, and C, 
in layer A, capital A, and layer capital B. If we need to, we can combine matrices and arrays. So uh, C is our normal combining function. And if we want to, we can combine things column-wise using C bind, or we can combine things row-wise using R bind. Okay? And you can transpose a matrix using the function lowercase t. All right? And so um, if I do C bind on A, and A itself is going to bind matrix A to another copy of A, right? And it, it duplicates all of the row, uh, column names, and that's fine, okay? Column names, just like named vectors, don't have to be unique. It's most useful when the names are unique, but they don't have to be, right? And then we can bind uh, matrices row-wise, and, and we get this. We can check for things to see if it's a matrix by using is.matrix or if it's an array by doing is.array. Okay. Or you can um, look at the dimensional attribute and, uh, and you can coerce things into a matrix or array using as matrix or as array. All right, so, uh, so here we have A. A is uh, a matrix and then what do we have? D, D is this. Okay, so if I do is.matrix on A, what will it say? True. What if I do is.array on A? Also true, okay? An array, a matrix is an array, but it's just an array with only two, okay? Whereas B, B is an array with three things, so I can do is.array B, and that will be true. Is B a matrix, yes or no? False, okay? So for it to be a matrix, it has to be in a, uh, a two-dimensional array, okay? What about is a Tom, uh, oh, and then we can ask is D, is D a matrix? So again, if you forgot what D is, D is this integer vector one through six. So if I ask, is this a matrix? Is matrix D, what is this? This is false, right? That's false, okay is atomic. What is the atomic? So D is atomic. Atomic is going to be true. Atomic meaning it has elements are all the same. If I say, if I take A and I say, is that atomic? What is that? Is A, my matrix here, is that atomic? Yes, it is. Okay. And B is this vector, is this atomic? Yes, okay? So atomic means everything in there is of the same data type, okay? Let's do is.vector. So, um, so D is this. Is this a vector? Yes, okay? Is A a vector? If I do is.vector A, that's going to be false, okay? Um, let's do... Okay, so C here I've got uh, C is this one row. It's a one dimensional uh, matrix here. Is this a vector? No, this, this is a matrix, okay? So even though it only has one row, it's a matrix, okay? And again, um, kind of the, the vector is checking to see if it's got dimensional attributes. Right? Um, so if I, uh, yeah, if I have a list, does a does a list check? Okay, so, oops, let's store this as Z here. Okay. Um, does Z have any uh, dimensions? Z is a list. No, it does not. Okay, so Z does not have any things. Uh, we can ask the structure of Z, and it's got this. We can ask for the attributes of Z. 
okay? And it just has the names f and g, but z itself has no dimensions, okay? So is, um, is z a vector? It is, okay? So z is a, is a vector, it's, a, it's treated as a one-dimensional data structure. Is this all okay? So we understand matrices and arrays, all of these things. Okay, uh, oh, I guess I talked about this a little bit. Um, so you can have one-dimensional data structures. I'm missing a T here, matrices. And so you can have a matrix with a single row or a single column and or arrays with just one dimension, um, but they are not vectors, okay? They are still matrices, all right? And we can always look at structure to reveal the differences here. So here is a one-dimensional vector, one, two, three, and we ask the structure, and we see it's an integer vector, and it shows one through three. It has no attributes, and it is atomic. So there's no dimensional attribute here for this uh, atomic vector f. With g, we're creating a column vector, or a matrix, with one column, one through three. And if we ask for the structure, Okay. Over here, the structure of this atomic vector says square bracket 1 colon 3, and it shows the elements here. Over here, I've got the structure of G, square bracket 1 colon 3, comma 1, indicating that there's two dimensions to it now. Okay, And so now it, um, it's a matrix. Okay, And if we ask for the attributes, it's going to say there's a dimensional attribute, three rows, one column. And this got cut, but as atomic is going to return true there. And here's the same thing for a row. One row, three columns, but because there's two dimensions here, or two elements to this thing, it's a matrix. This one might be the weirdest. Here I'm defining an array, and normally with an array we give it a vector of dimensions, right? So normally it would probably be, be like three rows, one column, one layer, or three rows, two columns, and four layers, or something like that. But here, as far as the dimensions go, I'm just saying like three rows or something. Um, and so when I print it out, this looks just like a vector, okay? And if I ask for the structure, it says uh, one through three, and then it has this thing, one, one D, okay? Is this, is this a vector? If I said, is vector i, what will that return? True, false? Here, let's, let's check it out. So here, here is i. And when I print it out, it looks like this. And then I do um, uh, is.vector i, whoops i, it's false, right? And if I ask do the dimensions of i, there, there is a dimensional attribute, even though it is of length one. There's only, it just says three rows or something like that, right? And if I ask for the attributes of i, am I going to have attributes? Yes, I had dimensional attributes, but it's weird because the dimensional attributes is just, there's only one element there. It just says three, three rows or three something three elements in the first dimension, and then there's no other dimensions, but the fact that there's dimensions here now makes it no, no longer an atomic vector. It's, it's an array. So if I ask is.array on i, it's going to say true. Is i a matrix? No. Okay. For a matrix, it has to be a two-dimensional array. All right, is that okay before I move on to data frames, all of this array nonsense and matrix stuff? All right, as far as data frames go, um, the data frames are stored as lists in R, okay? So they are lists. Lists could can carry um, things of different data types, right? And when you had a one-dimensional list, the lists, the elements of the list could be different lengths and stuff. You could have character vector of length 5 and an integer vector of length 10 and things like that. If you want a data frame, you have to have a list and all of those vectors need to be of the same length. Okay? 
and that allows it to form a two-dimensional kind of rectangular structure where each vector now forms a column in your data frame. Okay? And so because it's treated as a list, when you ask for the names of a data frame, what will it give back? It will give back um, effectively the same thing as the column names, okay? because each element in that list becomes a column, and so the names in the list are the same as the column names. Okay? But now that it's two-dimensional, you can also have row names. The length of a data frame is the length of the underlying list, which is going to be the number of columns and number of rows. We'll give you that number of rows. Okay? And you can subset a data frame as if it were a one-dimensional structure, like a list, or a two-dimensional structure where it behaves like a matrix. Okay, so we can create a data frame using the function data.frame, parentheses, and this is going to take uh, named vectors as inputs. Okay, so you say data frame x is equal to 1 through 3, the value is 1, 2, 3, and then y is equal to a, b, and c, and we create data frame, and it does this, 8, 1, 2, 3, a, b, c, those are my columns, column is x and column y. And if I ask what's the structure of this data frame, it says you've got um, a list, but the, and the element names are x and y. X is an integer vector, y is a factor, okay, with a, b, c, with the levels a, b, and c, okay. Um, so the default behavior of data frames is to turn character data or strings into factors, and if you don't want it to do that you have to use the option strings as factors equal false. So here I'm basically running the exact same command as I had up here, except I'm, I parsed it out a little bit, and I added strings as factors equals false. And so now when I create the data frame, I've got integer and character columns now. Again, a data frame is stored as a list inside R, so if we asked for type of, on that data frame, it's going to say list, whereas if I ask what's the class, the class will say it's a data frame. And then we can test to see if it's a data frame using is.dataframe of something, and it will say true. If we want to, we can coerce things into a data frame. If you apply data.frame, as.dataframe, to a vector, it creates a one-column data frame. So here is, so D is this, and if I do as.data frame D, okay, it creates a one column data frame, and the name is that thing D. A list will create one column for each element, um, but it's going to error out if they're not all the same length. So if you have a list of several vectors, and each of those vectors are the same length, you can coerce that into a data frame, no problem. If you've got, if the vectors are of different lengths, you can't do it. Okay. And then if you have a matrix, you can do as dot data frame, and it just turns the matrix into a data frame, exactly as you would expect. When we want to combine data frames, we can use C bind or R bind, but you've got to make sure that both of those things are data frames. Okay, so you want to combine a data frame with a data frame. So here I'm going to take the data frame df, which is the columns x and y, and I'm going to bind it to the data frame with z equal to 3, 3, 3 2, 1. Likewise, I can bind uh, data frames row-wise, okay? but again, I have to bind data frames to data frames, and I will use... Um, and so the data frame that I'm binding it row-wise has to be a data frame with two columns. And, and so I'm going to say x is 10 and y is equal to the letter z. Okay? And when you use rbind to combine data frames, the, the column names have to match. Otherwise, it's going to error out. Okay, and, and I have that. Okay. So the number of rows must match, uh, but names are ignored. With combining row-wise, the number and names of columns must match. It's, it says it's a common mistake to try to create a data frame by binding vectors first and then throwing it into a data frame. So don't do that. You just want to use data frame directly. Okay. So if I have um, 
use C bind on the vector A, which has the elements 1 and 2, and the vector B, which has the characters A and B, C bind is first going to treat this like a matrix, okay? And so what's that going to do? It's going to coerce everything into characters. It's going to coerce um, the 1 and 2 into character data because A and B is character data, so that's what it's going to do. And then when you data frame all of that, then it turns the character data into factors, okay? And so when we take a look at this data frame, it doesn't, it doesn't look like the way we want it to. So instead, we just use data frame directly. We give it the vector A and the vector B. And then if we want to preserve them as character data, we use strings as factors equals false. And so here we, here we have that. Okay, so just use data frame directly. Don't bind things first and then throw them into the data frame because C binding vectors will turn them into matrices. Okay, and then we've got, um, I'll introduce Deplier to you guys in a week or two. And Deplier is a very powerful package that um, really speeds up our kind of data summarization and data manipulation. And so, um, and in Deplier, we've got a structure called the Tibble, uh, which looks uh, a lot like a data frame, but it, it has some nice features when, um, when printing it. It doesn't try to print the entire data set, just what, what fits into your windows. Okay, let's talk subsetting. Well, I guess before I go on to subsetting, are there any questions? We're all okay? All right. Okay, so subsetting is a way to take a data structure, vector, matrix, data frame, whatever it is, and then just returning just the bits and pieces that you want. Okay, and it's, uh, it's very powerful, and you've probably had to do some subsetting already in Stats 20, uh, but we'll take a, maybe a little bit of a deeper look at subsetting. And, and there's a whole bunch of ways to do subsetting, and it can be a little bit tricky at first, but um, it is, it's, it's a really powerful thing that R can do, and, um, and so it's worth, worth studying and learning, okay? And R aid for subsetting is to use the structure command. Structure always kind of gives you an idea of how the object is structured, giving you an idea how to properly subset it. Okay, I guess we'll cover all of this. We'll, we'll subset using single square brackets and we'll subset using double square brackets or the dollar sign, which applies to lists and data frames. Okay, and then by using subsetting we can also combine it with assignment and then there's other applications of subsetting that we can do. Okay, so we'll first take a look at just a simple atomic vector. So here I'm creating a numeric vector, or type double, uh, x, okay? And so this has the values 2.1, 4.2, 3.3, and 5.4. And just so you, re you can easily remember the arrangement of these elements in the original vector, the value after the decimal is kind of its place in the original vector, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, without having it to be like from least to greatest or something like that. Okay, and so we can um, subset using positive, negative uh, integers, or uh, logical vectors or character vectors. Okay, so with positive integers, it's just going to return the elements in those specified positions. So if I say x square bracket 3, 1, it's going to return back the third element and the first element. So it gives you back 3.3 .3 and 2.1. It gives you back those elements in the order that you kind of specify them here. The function order of x will tell you how you should subset or how you should arrange the values so that they are in order from least to greatest. So order of x will give you the back this, the integers 1, 3, 2, and 4. And then if you subset x based on the order of x, it will put the values from least to greatest, 2.1, 3.3, 4 .3, If you give r the same, um, the same index more than one time, it will return the, that element more than one time. So if you say subset x 
with one and one, it will give you the first element both times. Okay, it's not going to complain that you're asking for the same thing over again. Okay, and if you give it um, uh, values with a decimal point, okay, those are just truncated to integers. So it doesn't round it, it just says 2.1, it sees it as a 2, and 2.9, it sees that as a 2, and so here it returns back the second element twice. If you give it negative integers, it basically gives you everything except those values. So if I say subset x minus 3 and 1, it will give me back x without elements in the third and first positions, so that gives me back the elements in the second and fourth position. But you can't mix negative and positive values because R looks at that and says, okay, you want a subset X without the first, and then you want the second. Uh, it, it gets confused, okay? Do, do you want everything? Hey, I don't know. Okay, this, it's, I can't even make sense of it myself. So neither can R. So it gives you back an error. Logical vectors, this is... Uh, probably uh, one of the best uses of subsetting in R is that if you give it a logical vector of true and false values it will return just the elements that correspond to true so here I've got the first two elements are true and the second two elements are false so it will just give me back the first two elements likewise I could have a logical comparison such as x greater than 3 x greater than 3 will be a logical test that will return true and false and so it will x greater than 3 will return true if x is greater than 3 and then if I subset using that logical vector then it will return values only the values that um, satisfy this so um, so this is false for the first element but true for the other three and so subsetting x based on x greater than 3 will indeed give me the values of x that are greater than 3. You know, if you had another vector that is the same length as x, you can kind of subset based on that, right? So if you had, so if, um, in like a data frame, if you had um, x is like numeric values, and then y, the column y is like um, some attribute, maybe like uh, the country of origin or something, you could create a logical vector, you know, country equal equal to USA or something like that. And so that will be true only for those where the, the elements are true for um, the country is equal to the USA. And then if you subset based on that on X, then it will give you only back the corresponding values of X that match up with those, uh, with those rows, okay? We'll take a look at that. But, um, but that's probably one of the most... Um, frequent use of logical vectors as far as subsetting your values. If the uh, logical vector that you give it is shorter than the um, vector that you want to subset, then it recycles that, right? So if I've got subset on true, comma, false, then it recycles it to true, false, true, false, and gives me back the first and third elements. And then if you have a missing value in your logical vector, or not even logical, just if you're giving it um, numeric values or something, the, the missing value will always give you back a missing value uh, when you do the subsetting here. Okay, so it says true, true, missing, false. It's going to give you back the first and the second, and then a missing, and then the false. All right, we got some special cases here. If you specify nothing, it's going to return back the entire ve uh, vector. All right. uh, this is especially useful for matrices because you can just say, I want everything in the second row, and I'm going to specify nothing for the column, and then it will give you everything in the second row and, and all, of the, all of the columns that are uh, in the second row. And then if you give it zero, if you put zero in the... Um, um, in the bracket, then it returns a zero length vector. Okay, so numeric zero, so x is a numeric vector, and if you say x subset or square bracket zero, it's going to give you a zero length numeric vector, which um, is basically an empty vector. It's not the null object, 
but it's an empty vector, right? So numeric zero. So anytime you see logical zero, numeric zero, or character zero, that means, um, you know, x is a numeric vector. It's you know, it's a vector of this type, but its length is zero. And then if your vector has names, right? So here we are setting the names to the vector x, and we're giving it the names a, b, c, and d. And so y is now this thing. We can subset y based on um, those names. Okay, so we can say, give me back the element called d, c, and a, and it does exactly that. And then likewise, with inter integer indices, you can repeat the indices. So if you repeat um, the name a multiple times, it will give you back that element multiple times. And if you're going to square uh, subset with the single square bracket, your names have to match exactly. So z is a vector with two elements in it. The first is named abc, and the second is named def. But if I try to subset z using the name a and d, it says I couldn't find those things, and it returns missing values. Okay, rather than um, rather than approximating the name there. Okay, so I believe, um, so that covers what, uh, what I want to cover for today. So we'll end here, and uh, we'll see you guys on Friday. I hope the uh, homework is going well for you guys, and uh, so we'll see you then.